So in the previous session, you have uh, <coughs> learnt about uh, Kirchhoff's laws. One is a current law and the other one is a voltage law. Today, <coughs> we'll take up a discussion over one network designed by a person called Wheatstone. It is called Wheatstone's network. A network designed by a person called Wheatstone. It is called Wheatstone's network. <coughs> Before I tell you what is this network, let me ask you one simple problem and I will ask you to solve. The problem is based on the resistors, combination of a resistors. So you will find uh, resistors connected in the network 2 ohm, 3 ohm, 10 ohm, 5 ohm, here a 10 ohm. You are asked to find out effective resistance between A and C. You are asked to find out effective resistance between A and C. <coughs> of course, if you follow the rules what you learnt in the previous part of this particular chapter solving the equivalent resistance circuit, what you will do first of all, you will connect a battery across A and B. Wherever you are asked to find out the effective resistance you are you are asked to connect a battery across those two points that is the first thing you are supposed to do battery should be connected across a and c because you are asked to find out effective resistance between a and c okay now how to solve um okay i'll make a small change in the numbers let us say this is a 2 ohm this is a 4 ohm this is a 5 ohm and this is a 10 ohm 2 ohm 4 ohm 5 ohm and 10 ohm and here there is a 10 ohm um, can I take 2 and 4 in series? See, you can take a 2 resistors in series if they are connected end to end. I said here 2 ohm, here 4 ohm, here 5 ohm and here 10 ohm and here there is a 10 ohm. You can take 2 resistors R1 and R2 in series if they are connected end to end. They are in series here. Suppose where they are connected end to end, if you have a one more connection R3, can I take R1 and R2 in series? No. To consider two resistors in series, the condition, the basic condition in a basic method of solving the problem is, the two resistors are said to be taken in connected in series if they are connected end to end, provided where they are connected end to end, there should not be any other connection. Means you can't take them in series. If this connection was not there, surely R and R, R1 and R2 would have been taken in series. Correct? Here I am facing the same problem. 2 and 4, they are connected end to end. But where they are connected end to end, there is a one more connection. I am facing a problem. I can't take 2 and 4 in series. It doesn't mean that they are in parallel. Basic idea of solving the network. 5 and 10, connected end to end. But where they are connected end to end, there is a one more connection. So I am having a problem in solving this problem using the earlier knowledge of series and parallel combination correct remember the numbers what i have written 2 ohm 4 ohm 5 ohm 10 ohm here 10 ohm and you are asked to find out effective resistance between a and c i am unable to solve this problem by the usual method of solving the problem based on your earlier knowledge problem i am facing is i couldn't take 2 and 4 in series even though they are connected end to end, there is a one more connection from that point. I can't take them in series, general rule. Correct? Up till now, whatever you know, based on that. Even I, I couldn't take 5 and 10 in series because they are connected end to end. Again, where they are connected end to end, there is a one more connection. I can't take 5 and 10 in series. I can't take 2 and 10 also in series. 2, 2 and 10 in parallel also. You understood what I mean by that. Okay, I'll come back to this problem at the end of this discussion. Remember the problem. I'll again repeat the problem. 
with the same numbers remember the number 2 ohm 4 ohm 5 ohm 10 ohm and there is one more 10 ohm there in between how to solve the problem we'll see later okay <clears throat> what is Wheatstone's network as the name itself suggests the network was surely designed by a person called Wheatstone this network consists of four resistors let us name those resistors as P comma Q comma S and R are connected in a cyclic order four resistors P comma Q comma S and R are connected in a cyclic order <coughs> Across one of the diagonal, how many diagonals are there? Two diagonals are there, correct? Across one of the diagonal, a galvanometer of resistance G is connected. Across the other diagonal, a cell is connected. I'll repeat Wheatstone's network consists of four resistors. P, comma Q, comma S and R are connected in a cyclic order, P, Q, S, R in a cyclic order in the form of a quadrilateral. Let us name the corners for our convenience as A, B, C and D. Across one of the diagonal, a galvanometer is connected. I will take up the diagonal as BD across BD I am going to connect a galvanometer its resistance I am going to represent as G G is a resistance of a galvanometer and across the other diagonal a cell is connected across the other diagonal a cell is connected surely the cell can have an EMF E and internal resistance R this is Wheatstone's network question may be there in your mind what is a galvanometer you might have heard about ohmic devices and non ohmic devices there you come across ohmic devices are the one which obeys ohms law one of the example for a ohmic device is a galvanometer <coughs> galvanometer is a device used to detect the presence of a current in the circuit you might have seen this galvanometer in your physics laboratory the external structure of the galvanometer will look like this external structure internal structure you don't bother now when the time comes you're going to learn about that also in a separate chapter see in this I say I'm talking about external structure of the galvanometer it is a device used to detect the presence of a current in the circuit it has got two terminals for a connection two terminals for the connection and uh, here there is a pointer pointer and there are readings on the galvanometer there is a zero at the center and there are 30 divisions on either side of the zero here they might have written 10 20 30 here also 10 20 30 on either side of the zero I said galvanometer is a device used to detect the presence of a current in the circuit it has got some resistance because it has got some coil that's why it has got some resistance the resistance of a galvanometer I took it as G if you connect the galvanometer in the circuit where there is a current if the current flows through the galvanometer pointer in the galvanometer will show deflection to one side where is the zero in the galvanometer see normally in most of the devices zero will start from the left side extreme end and there are some maximum reading at the right hand side extreme end correct but in the galvanometer zero will be at the center and there are 30 divisions on either side of the zero this is a pointer when you include a galvanometer in the circuit where there is a current when a current flows through a galvanometer pointer in the galvanometer will show deflection to one side means pointer in the galvanometer may deflect to the right side with respect to you or pointer in the galvanometer deflect to the left side 
which side it deflects depends upon the direction of the conventional current suppose if i if the pointer in the galvanometer deflects to right side means conventional current is in one direction if the pointer in the galvanometer deflects to the opposite side means conventional current will be in the opposite direction deflection is more means more current deflection is less means less current understood okay so this galvanometer is connected here and the cell you already know it has got emf it has got internal resistance everything i marked this is wheatstone's network see if they ask in the exam exam what is wheatstone's network you just describe like this wheatstone's network consists of four resistors p comma q comma s and r are connected in a cyclic order in the form of a quadrilateral across one diagonal galvanometer of resistance g is connected g is a representation of a resistance of a galvanometer and across the other diagonal AC is other diagonal, cell is connected. So when I say across the other diagonal, don't expect the cell should be connected here only. Across the diagonal points, it is connected. Even galvanometer can be kept outside also. Clear? This is Wheatstone's network. <coughs> okay, now what I am going to explain is a possible 5 marks question in your board exams. What is the question we will frame at the end? For a time being, you keep in mind that we are talking something more about Wheatstone's network. That's all. <clears throat> if I switch on the battery, don't you expect some current? Fine. Let us say current in the circuit is I. This is the main current. You might have heard about this technical word main current, branch currents, right? Okay. This is a current I. Here, if the current is I, means throughout current should be I only, no? throughout current should be i here because as long as it is a single branch current should be same that means here current should be i only what is the direction of that current should be same okay now you think what do you call this a technically don't you think a can be called as a junction it is something like main road divides into two sub roads if it is a single road we don't call it as a junction when you are moving in a path then you find a two different path after that means we you have reached a junction which is also called as a node a technical term node or a junction i can call a as a node at a node or a junction can i expect that i will divide into a two branches i1 through p and i2 through r let us assume that current through P is I1, current through R is I2. Again, B is a node. B is again a node. Forget about I2 for a timing. Let it flow through R. We'll come back to it later. I1 is a current flowing through P. Let us say at B, which is a node, let us assume that this I1 divides into branches. Out of I1, let us say IG is flowing through the galvanometer. Out of I1, IG is flowing through the galvanometer. What is the remaining current out of I1? Obviously, it is I1 minus IG. Out of I1, if IG is flowing through the galvanometer, remaining current, there is no other option. It has to flow through a resistor Q only. Current flowing through Q is I1 minus IG. Okay, let that I1 minus IG, let it flow through Q. Let IG flowing through the galvanometer. Now, come back to this I2. I2 is a current flowing through a resistor R. Can I call it D as a junction again or a node? Do you expect I2 being divided into two part, one through the galvanometer and one through a resistor? Cannot. If you say again, I2 is divided into two parts here, one through the galvanometer and one through a resistor, there is no sense here. See, what you find is, in this particular branch B to D, there is a current from B to D also, there is a current from D to B also. There is no sense in saying like that. What is the condition for a current? There should be a conducting path and there should be a potential difference. If you are expecting a current from B to D, current in the part B to D, there should be a conducting path between B and D, that is there. Conducting path is there between B and D. And which is the one more condition for the current? There should be a potential difference. If any one of the condition is missing out of the two, can you have a current? No. Can you have a flow of charges? No. To have a flow of charges or to say there is a current, there should be a conducting path and there should be a potential difference. Out of the two condition, if any one is missing, you cannot have a flow of charges or a current. 
that means if you are expecting the current between b and d in this path there should be a potential difference between b and d and there should be a conducting path conducting path is there we already provided in the network right which is one more requirement potential difference when you say there is a potential difference one should be at higher potential compared to other no b and d out of b and d one should be at higher potential compared to other if I say B is at higher potential compared to D, what should be a conventional current? What should be a direction of a conventional current? B to D. Because conventional current is always from higher potential to lower potential. If B is at higher potential compared to D, current is from B to D. If D is at higher potential compared to B, current will be from D to B. I am talking about conventional current. Which means you cannot expect a current from B to D as well as from D to B at the same time. What I am trying to tell you is, since you already divided a current at B as Ig and I1 as I1 minus Ig, you can't divide this current I2. So what I can expect is, this Ig will add up to I2 and total current that is I2 plus Ig will flow through the resistor. I2 and Ig will add up, together they flow through the resistor I2 plus Ig. At the end, what I am trying to tell you is, either you divide a current at B or at D, any one point. Don't divide a current at B and D and say that current is flowing through a galvanometer from B to D as well as from B to B. There is no sense. Of course, no rule that current should be directed from B to D only. Current would have been directed from D to B. That's what I said. If B was at higher potential at compared to D, Ig will be directed from B to D. If D was at higher potential compared to B, the Ig would have been directed from D to B that is left to you in your explanation where you are going to divide but in, pra in practice it is left to the resistors circuit elements which is at higher potential depends okay now there is even there is one more possibility that B and D can be at same potential also if B and D are at same potential can you have a current through the galvanometer? No, that is what I said. To have a current, you have to satisfy the two conditions. There should be a conducting path and there should be a potential difference. Only conducting path is not enough. Potential difference is also needed. If B and D, if both are at same potential, what is the potential difference between B and D? Zero. That time, current will not be there through the galvanometer. Ig will be zero. Keep in mind whatever I said. Okay. So, let me proceed. <coughs> Um, so, we are having a Wheatstone's network, we have indicated the currents in the various branches of the network, even we know the main current, everything. So, let me apply KCL. Now, at this stage, you know what do you mean by KCL. I am going to apply KCL. To a node. A. At the same time, I will apply KCL to a node C. You agree that C is also node? Yeah. I told you the simple approach of applying KCL is remembering the Kirchhoff's law in a simple manner is sum of the current entering the node is equal to sum of the current leaving the node look at the node a which are the current entering the node only i which are the current leaving the node i1 and i2 which means i should write i should be equal to i1 plus i2 do you agree with me okay look at the next sentence which i written apply kcl to a node c if I apply KCL to a node C again, sum of the current entering the node is equal to sum of the current leaving the node. Which are the current entering the node? I1 minus Ig plus I2 plus Ig. I1 minus Ig plus I2 plus Ig. Sum of the current entering the node is equal to sum of the current leaving the node. Which is the current leaving the node C? Only I. Don't you think that it is same as the previous equation? Can I can I cancel Ig plus Ig and minus Ig? What you are left out with? I1 plus I2 is equal to I. Correct? See? Okay. So these are the simple equations. Now let me apply KVL. KCL is over. Now I am going to apply KVL to a mesh. A, B, D, A. 
I am applying KVL to a mesh ABD. I will draw the direction of a traverse according to a mesh which I selected A to B, B to D, D to A. It is in a clockwise direction. You know how to apply KVL. We will move from A to B. First we will go for algebraic sum of IR, then we will go for EMF in the mesh. When you move from A to B, what is the product of IR? Surely I1 into P plus I1 into P or minus I1 into P? Surely it is, yeah, minus I1 into P because the direction of the traverse is from A to B. Direction of a current I1 is also from A to B. That term product should be taken as a negative. Okay. We'll move from B to D. B to D. What is the current? IG. What is the resistance? G. I told in the introduction. Gallometer of resistance G. IG into G. Plus or minus. Again minus. Because the direction of a current in the branch is same as the direction of a traverse. That term the product of I and R should be taken as a negative. B to D is the direction of traverse. IG is also directed from B to D according to the notation already used. Okay. We will move from D to A. When you move from D to A, what is the resistance you come across? R. What is the current? I2. So, what is the product of current in the resistance? I2 into R or R into I2. Plus I2 into R or minus I2 into R. This time it is a plus because direction of a traverse is from D to A. Current is from A to D. I2 is directed from A to D. That is why it is plus. Direction of a current is opposite to direction of a traverse. So, I reached back A. Algebraic sum of IR is over. Do you have any EMF in the mesh which we have selected? A to B, B to D, D to H. Do you have any cell? No. So forget about EMF. According to the law, it should be equal to 0. I will take this as equation 1. I believe you understood this. Now, you think of applying KVL to one more mesh. If you apply KVL to a one more mesh, I will name the mesh BCDB. BCDB is a one more mesh. If you apply KVL to a mesh BCDB, again move from B to C. What is the resistance you come across? Q. What is the current? I1 minus IG. What is the product of current in the resistance? I1 minus IG into Q. Whether it is a plus I1 minus IG into Q or minus I1 minus IG into Q. It is a minus because direction of a traverse is from B to C. Direction of a current is also from B to C. That is why it is negative. Okay, I reached C. Now I will move from C to D in the direction of a traverse. C to D. What is the current? I2 plus IG. What is the resistance? Yes. Which means equation should be I2 plus IG into S. What do you think? This product should be negative or positive? It is positive because direction of a current is from D to C but direction of a traverse is from C to D so it is plus whenever the direction of a current in the branch is opposite to direction of a traverse and the product of IR is taken as positive that was the same convention let me proceed move from D to B what is the resistance you come across resistance of a gallometer G what is the current IG what is the product of current in the resistance IG into G what do you think? Answer is plus IG into G or minus IG into G. It is again plus because direction of a traverse is from D to B. Direction of a traverse is from D to B but the direction of a IG is from B to D. So it should be plus. So I reached B. Algeria sum of IR is over in the mesh. In the same mesh do you find any cell? Of course cell is there in the circuit but in the mesh which you are applying where, for, where you are applying KVL do you find any cell in that? No. What is the EMF there? Zero. It is equal to 0. This is equal to 0 according to the KVL. So, this is equation 2. I hope you followed. Okay. Now, coming to the main point. According to Wheatstone, network was designed by network was designed by Wheatstone. No. Network was designed by Wheatstone, right? So, according to Wheatstone. What he says is, the network designed by him is said to be balanced. The network is said to be balanced.
if galvanometer shows zero deflection you think practically what do you mean by galvanometer is showing a zero deflection i told you in the introduction of the galvanometer only galvanometer is a device used to detect the presence of a current when you include a galvanometer in the circuit if the galvanometer shows some deflection means there is a current deflection is more means more current deflection is less means less current and which side it deflects depends upon the direction of a current if deflects to the right of the zero current is in one direction i am talking about conventional current if the deflection is to the opposite side of the zero, means current is in a reverse direction if the galvanometer shows zero deflection means of course either galvanometer should be spoiled even if you think that galvanometer is working properly and galvanometer is showing a zero deflection means current flowing through the galvanometer is zero current flowing through the galvanometer is zero means can i say that ig is equal to zero think over the point according to the balancing condition of wheatstone's network according to wheatstone his network is balanced if current flowing through the galvanometer is zero what do you mean by current flowing through the galvanometer is zero network is there every connections are there battery is there it is on but still current flowing through the galvanometer is zero means pointer in the galvanometer should show a zero deflection that is possible if b and d are at same potential because connections are there what is the condition for the flow of charges or for a current there should be a conducting path and there should be a potential difference conducting path is there between b and d but still galvanometer is showing a zero deflection means ig will be zero current flowing through a galvanometer is zero that is possible if and only if potential at b and potential at d are equal potential at b and potential at d are equal means potential difference between b and d potential at b is equal to potential at d or potential difference between b and d should be equal to zero next question is under what condition this will happen that's the main question every time it won't happen every time current flowing through the galvanometer will not be zero every time potential at b and d will not be same every time potential difference between b and d cannot be zero or the question is we would like to know under what condition you will find that current flowing through the galvanometer is zero or potential at b is equal to potential at d or under what condition you can say that network is balanced every word is related network is said to be balanced if current flowing through the galvanometer is zero that is possible only when the potential at b and d are same that means potential difference between b and d should be equal to zero now the question is what is the condition to achieve this will get the condition how to get the condition substitute ig back in the equation one end assume that network is balanced by assuming network is balanced we'll try to get the condition if you substitute ig is equal to zero in equation one and equation two equation one and equation two equation one will reduce to see i'll substitute i is equal to zero in this equation equation one will reduce to minus i1 into p i is zero no yeah plus i2 into r is equal to zero correct don't you think this can be also rewritten as i1 into p is equal to i2 into r simple mathematics no physics no magic calls i took i1 into p to the other side minus has become plus so i can equate i1 into p is equal to i2 into r i will take this as equation 4 in equation 1 i substitute i is equal to 0 i got equation 3 see here now i am going to substitute i is equal to 0 in equation 2 i had to substitute i is equal to 0 in equation 1 and 2 our our main aim is to know under what condition you will find that this network is balanced network is balanced means remember current flowing through a galvanometer is zero or potential at b and d are equal or potential difference between b and d should be zero if i substitute i is equal to 0 in equation 2 i is zero so equation 2 will reduce to i think you are able to follow minus i1 into q i is zero yeah plus i2 into s again ig is zero plus i2 into s this is again zero that should that should be equal to zero which implies i can rewrite the last equation as 
I1 into Q is equal to I2 into S. Mathematically allowed. Concentrate on equation 3 and equation 4. Just look at equation 3 and 4. I will continue here few steps. Just divide equation 3 by equation 4. If you divide equation 3 by equation 4, left hand side will be I1 into P by I1 into Q is equal to right hand side will be I2 into R divided by I2 into S. Can I cancel I1? Can I cancel I2? You are left out with P by Q is equal to R by S. P by Q will be equal to R by S. This is a balancing condition for Wheatstone's network. If this condition is satisfied, we say Wheatstone's network is balanced. What is the meaning of that equation? I will tell you. Wait for some more time. Don't you think P by Q is equal to R by S means it can be also written as Q by P is equal to S by R. P by Q is equal to R by S means reciprocal should be also equal. No. What is the reciprocal of this Q by P? It should be equal to reciprocal of the R by S. That is S by R. Mathematically thinking, don't you think I can interchange the position of a Q and R and I can write it as P by R is equal to Q by S. I brought Q here to the numerator and I brought R to the denominator here. P, Q, P by R is equal to Q by S. P by R is equal to Q by S means it can be also written as R by P is equal to S by Q. Correct? I took a reciprocal of both the sides. Just look at all these equations. All these equations. They have a same meaning. You know what is the meaning of it? Network is said to be balanced if ratio of the edges and arms of the resistors are equal. See the first equation which I derived. P by Q is equal to R by S. See, P by Q is equal to R by S. Left to right is equal to left to right. Like that. Ratio of the edges and arms of the resistors are equal. P by Q is the ratio of the edges and arms. No. Who is the next ratio of the edges and arms? R by S. P by Q is equal to R by S. Or reciprocal. Q by P is equal to S by R. Right to left is equal to right to left. Like that. Left to right is equal to left to right. Right to left is equal to right to left. P by Q is equal to R by S or Q by P is equal to S by R. Or P by R. P by R is equal to Q by S. Top to bottom. Left side. P by R is equal to Q by S. Even that is also ratio of the resistor arm of the resistor only. P by R is equal to Q by S. See the third equation. Next one. R by P is equal to S by Q. One and the same, no. R by P, bottom to top of the left side, is equal to bottom to top of the right side. All are having the same meaning. P by Q is equal to R by S. Ratio of the resistance arm of the resistors are equal. Or Q by P is equal to S by R. Ratio of the resistance arm of the resistors are equal. Or, which is the next one? P by R is equal to Q by S. Ratio of the resistance arm of the resistors are equal. I hope you understood this. The last one, R by P is equal to S, S by Q. So conclusion is, we can conclude that based on this discussion. Of course, you can stop your answer here. You need not explain all these equations. Just for your reference, these equations has been given. You can stop the answer here. Based on the answer, what I got, I can conclude that Wheatstone's network is said to be balanced if the ratio of the edges and arms of the resistors are equal. When ratio of the edges and arms of the resistors are equal, what is the current flowing through the gallometer? Zero. Because that time potential at, at potential at B and potential at D are same or potential difference between B and D will be zero. When this condition is satisfied, which condition? When the ratio of the edges and arms of the resistors are equal, the network is balanced. That time current flowing through the gallometer is zero. That time potential at B and D are equal or potential difference between B and D is equal to zero. Now the possible 5 marks question here is, what is Wheatstone's network and derive the balancing condition for Wheatstone's network? I said this is a possible, very important, commonly asked 5 marks question. 
what is Wheatstone's network and uh, derive the balancing condition for Wheatstone's network. You have to write up till here starting from this circuit diagram. We had explained what is Wheatstone network as I what I told you. Then these equations KCL to the two node. Cal this diagram is not required just for your reference I explained. KVL equation 1 equation 2 then writing network is balanced if IG is equal to 0. Then substituting IG is equal to 0 in equation 1 and 2 you will get equation 3 and 4 just to divide 3 by 4 this is the answer. So it is a commonly asked question for 5 marks from this particular topic. Now I think uh, once you understand this, you can solve that problem which I started the topic. If you have remembered the problem which I have solved, which I have asked you. See, let me wind up that also. You can say solving that problem is one of the application of this network. I gave you this problem. Here there was a 2 ohm, here there was a 4 ohm, correct? Here there was a 5 ohm, here there was a 10 ohm and here there was one more 10 ohm if you have remembered and this was named as A, this was named as a C and you are asked to find out effective resistance between A and C. You are asked to find out effective resistance between A and C. Means you are supposed to connect a battery across A and C when you are finding out effective resistance between A and C. Don't you think this is comparable to your Wheatstone's network? Yeah. In the place of P, I am having 2 ohm. In the place of Q, I am having 4 ohm. In the place of R, I am having 5 ohm. In the place of S, I am having 10 ohm. In the place of a resistance of a galvanometer, I am having 10 ohm there. Check whether network is balanced. Check whether network is balanced. P by Q. I told you to compare. It should be quick enough. 2 by 4. P by Q is equal to 2 by 4 here. That is half. R by S. 5 by 10. That is also half. No? Means network is balanced. When the network is balanced, you know, in the position of a galvanometer in the network, I am having 10 ohm here. Network is balanced, you know. Do you expect any current flowing through 10 ohm now? No. There is no current flowing through 10 ohm. IG is 0, no. If I refer the earlier network, if I say here I, here I1, here I2, are you listening? Here I1, here I2 and here IG will be 0. Network is balanced. When the network is balanced, IG will be equal to 0, correct? Means in the pleasant, in the place of a galvanometer I am having a 10 ohm resistor means there is no current flowing through it that means this point and this point both are at same potential which means there is no use of a 10 ohm you connect a 10 ohm 100 ohm 1000 ohm doesn't make any difference because B and D are at same potential there won't be a current flowing through 10 ohm better to ignore that 10 ohm no you connect 10 ohm instead of 10 ohm you connect 100 ohm you connect 1000 ohm doesn't make any difference in the circuit because network is balanced there won't be a current flowing through this part better to remove that this is i1 what is the current flowing through this i1 only because ig is zero network is balanced ig is zero means what is the current flowing through this i1 only this is i2 what is the current flowing through 10 ohm i2 only because in the original circuit it is i2 plus ig network is balanced ig is zero what is the current flowing through this i2 here I1, here I1 means they are connected in series, no. When the current is same, obviously they are connected in series. So 2 and 4 are in series. Next, 5 and 10 are in series. I hope you understood this. 2 and 4 are in series. 5 and 10 are in series. When 2 and 4 are in series, what is the effective resistance? 6 ohm. You understood why I can take them in series? Okay, now forget about your original what you learnt. Now this is a special case. Even though there was a 10 ohm resistor, but there is no effect of 10 ohm you found, right? So I can remove that 10 ohm. So what you find is here and here current is same means they are connected in series. 4 and 2 are in series means answer is 6 ohm. How this 5 and 10 are connected is series. What is the effect resistance? 15 ohm. How 6 and 15 are connected? Parallel. Can't you solve now? I leave it to you, you have to complete this. I hope you followed this. So when 6 and 15 are in parallel, 
2 and 4 are in series answer is 6 ohm i can replace 2 and 4 by a single resistor value 6 ohm i can replace 5 and 10 by a single resistor value 15 ohm how 6 and 15 ohm are connected obviously they are connected in parallel between a and c here right how to find out effect resistance 6 into 15 rp r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 6 into 15 by 6 plus 15 this is how do you write the answer i hope you follow this that simplification you do it this is how you have to take remember this method is applicable only when the network is balanced p by q should be equal to r by s then only you can ignore the 10 ohm now next question may arise in your mind if it is not balanced if the network is not balanced you can't go for this instead of 4 ohm if i had 3 ohm 2 ohm 3 ohm 5 ohm 10 ohm 2 by 3 is obviously not equal to 5 by 10 no that time i can't go for this method this method is applicable only when the network is balanced if the network is not balanced how to solve that question may be there in your mind of course there are methods there is some method one particular method called star to delta conversion delta to star conversion which you can learn in your competitive level classes that is not required for your board session if the network is not balanced how to solve such circuit that can be solved by using a method called delta to star conversion and star to delta conversion that is a method there is a one particular method that you have to learn after learning the method you can solve that circuit with where network is not balanced i gave a simple case when the network is balanced how to solve it i hope you understood this yeah so i think the idea about wheatstone network is clear so next we will proceed further with applications part of wheatstone's network next we will proceed further with application part of wheatstone's network so we have seen a balancing condition for a wheatstone's network so there are some important point to be uh, highlighted related to that uh, balanced network when network is balanced when the wheatstone's network is balanced these are the highlighting point which will be helpful a lot in tackling the problems when the network is balanced you agree that p by q is equal to r by s right p by q will be equal to r by s even you agree that the current flowing through the galvanometer is zero when the network is balanced now under this condition of balanced Wheatstone's network if I asked with you what is a potential difference across P what is a potential difference across Q what is a potential difference across R and what is a potential difference across S potential difference can be given as a product of current and the resistance using a mathematical form of ohm's law you know when the network is balanced ig will be zero keep in mind what is a potential drop across p it is i1 into p what is a potential drop across q it will be i1 into q ig will be zero what is a potential difference across r it will be i2 into r what is a potential difference across s it will be i2 into s because that time ig is zero what is the potential difference across the galvanometer v suffix g indicates that potential difference across the galvanometer surely it will be equal to zero that is why current flowing through the galvanometer is zero even do you agree with the fact that p into s should be equal to q into r when the network is balanced p by q is equal to r by s means p into s should be equal to q into r and also if i asked you to find out equivalent resistance between a and c in the balanced network equivalent resistance between a and c now you should be able to answer because uh, i have explained you one problem when the network is balanced how to find out effective resistance between the two points a and c i have already explained it now you should be able to answer this question when the network is balanced whatever the point i have written under the condition the network is balanced when the network is balanced what is the effective resistance across a and c how p and q are connected 
in series because when the network is balanced there is no current flowing through the galvanometer no that time how p and q are connected in series effector resistance is p plus q how r and s are connected in series effector resistance is r plus s that time ig is zero current through p and current through q are i1 only means p and q are in series no no use of a galvanometer so p and q are in series r and s are in series how p and p plus q and r plus s are connected in parallel now i can go for r effective r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 this is r1 this is r2 r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 if i do don't you think r1 is p plus q r2 is r plus s divided by r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 this is a formula you can use this direct formula in calculating r effective by chance if you come across p is equal to q is equal to r is equal to s network is balanced or not obviously balanced p by q is equal to r by s that time r suffix s yes, ac will be equal if i say this is equal to x p is equal to q is equal to r is equal to s is equal to x r suffix ac is also x only how x plus x 2x x plus x 2x 2x into 2x 4x square by x plus x plus x plus x 4x 4x square by 4x 4x will get cancelled you are left out with only x so these are all valid equation when the network is balanced when the network is balanced and one more thing i would like to tell you here <clears throat> um if i replace this galvanometer by some other galvanometer by some other resistance whether balancing condition will be affected no because balancing condition will not involve a resistance of a galvanometer at all if you replace the galvanometer by some other galvanometer of some other resistance balancing condition will remain unaffected p by q is equal to r by s only if i replace the cell by some other cell of some other emf whether balancing condition is affected no not at all if you replace the cell by some other cell of some other emf balancing condition will not be affected at all because balancing condition will not contain a emf of the cell b by q is equal to r by s it will remain as it is so balancing condition is unaffected if i replace the galvanometer by some other galvanometer of some other resistance balancing condition unaffected if i replace the cell by some other cell of some other emf what if you interchange the position of a galvanometer and a cell in the circuit like instead of connecting a galvanometer across bd instead of connecting a cell across a and c interchange their position means connect a cell across b and d connect a galvanometer across a and c means it should be like this this is a this is b this is c this is d i said connect a galvanometer across a and c and connect a cell across b and d you include a cell here interchange the position of a galvanometer and a cell whether balancing condition will be affected whether balancing condition will be affected think what do you mean by balancing condition ratio of the adjacent arms of the resistor should be equal you stand here left to right by left is equal to left by right is equal to left by right means this was p in the original diagram q yes r correct these are the four resistors p q s and r what is the balancing condition now if you stand here also r by p is equal to s by q or p by q is equal to r by s if you follow the procedure if you stand here in front of the cell and find a balancing and left by right is equal to left by right r by p is equal to what s by q don't you think that r by p is equal to s by q is nothing but p by q is equal to r by s this positions can be interchanged p by q is equal to r by s conclusion is even if you interchange the position of a galvanometer and a cell balancing condition remains unaffected that is the reason why when i introduced the wheatstone's network i told you wheatstone's network consisting of four resistors p comma q comma s and r connected in a cyclic order in the form of a quadrilateral across one of the diagonal galvanometer of resistance g is connected i said across the other diagonal cell is connected i just said across one diagonal i never said it should be connected across this diagonal only 
doesn't matter you connect a cell or a galvanometer across any of the diagonal of course both should not be connected to the same diagonal galvanometer should be to the one diagonal and cell should be connected to the other diagonal balancing condition will remain unaffected i hope you follow this now coming to the next major point <coughs> one more application part of this wheatstone's network There is an instrument called meter bridge. There is an instrument called meter bridge. You can say this is a practical form of a Wheatstone's network. I will write a Wheatstone's network at this corner so that later you can compare the meter bridge with the Wheatstone's network. Because I said in the introduction, meter bridge is a practical form of a Wheatstone's network. So this is a Wheatstone's network which we already had. Here there is a resistor P, Q, S, R, right? Here there was a galvanometer of resistance G is connected, I said. And uh, here you are connecting a cell. The cell has got some EMF and internal resistance small r. That was a Wheatstone's network. I said, now I am talking about one instrument, meter bridge, which is a practical form of a Wheatstone's network, I said. First common question is when I said it is an instrument, for what purpose it is used? This meter bridge can be used to determine the resistance of a given conductor. The resistance of a given conductor can be determined using a meter bridge. See, before I proceed further, for your kind information, <coughs> this year, when you are performing a physics practicals in a physics lab, there are two experiments which you are going to perform using this instrument called meter bridge. So, listen carefully. Helpful a lot when you are performing the experiments also. <coughs> I said, this year, in a physics practicals, there are two experiments which are going to perform using an instrument called meter bridge. Maybe in the introduction to this particular topic, sir, might have already told you. There are around uh, four to five experiments are there based on this particular chapter. Around four to five experiment. So two experiments are using a meter bridge. One is determining the resistivity of a material using a meter bridge. Determining the resistivity of a material. Resistivity is given by the symbol rho and that rho can be given as pi d square r by or pi d square p by 4l you know the formula for resistance you know r is equal to rho l by a from this formula only you have rearranged and i got this formula what is a area of cross section of the wire right a is a pi r square pi r square can be taken as pi d square by 4 pi d square by 4 is multiplied for r instead of r i took it as p resistance here rho is the resistivity of the material of the wire l is the length of the wire d is the diameter of the wire l and d will be given to you when you are performing the experiment l and d will be given to you to find out rho you should know p this is the resistance of a given wire or a conductor one of the experiment using a meter bridge was finding the resistivity of a material using a meter bridge and there the formula which are you going to use is rho is equal to pi d square by pi d square p by 4l d is the diameter of the wire which will be given to you diameter was found using a screw gauge and length of the wire it was found using a meter scale that will be given to you d and l is given to you only you have to find out p resistance of the wire not only the experiment i'm performing one of the use of the meter bridge is to determine the resistance of a given conductor resistance of a given conductor and one more experiment is you are verifying a series and parallel combination of a resistors using a meter bridge you have learnt about series combination of resistor parallel combination of resistor right that you are verifying 
actually it is a verification ohms law where you are verifying series and parallel combination using a metal bridge okay <clears throat> so before i start in detail explanation okay thoughts will come in your mind i said meter bridge is a practical form of a wheatstone network then uh, how the meter bridge looks let me describe the meter bridge before i describe the meter bridge i one more point i would like to add up you know each and every instrument works based on some principle basic principle the basic principle behind the working of a meter bridge is balancing condition of a wheatstone network balancing condition of wheatstone's network this is a basic principle how you will come to know step by step will proceed <clears throat> let me start describing what is a meter bridge <clears throat> i'm talking about description now <clears throat> description of the instrument this meter bridge is consisting of one rectangular wooden frame rectangular wooden frame on either end of the rectangular wooden frame there is a l shaped metal strip this is a one l shaped metal strip at one end of the meter bridge metal strips have a negligible resistance just like your copper wire and one more l shaped metal strip is at the other end between the two l shaped metal strips there is a one more metal strip leaving the gap you can see there is one gap between this l shaped metal strip and this metal strip there is a gap between this l shaped metal strip and this metal strip technically you can call that gap as a left gap and a right gap because one gap is with respect to you at the left side of the instrument other gap is with respect to you at the right side of the instrument okay and there are terminals for electrical connection on these metal strips these are the whatever the dots i am marking in the diagram is representing the terminals for the electrical connection <clears throat> finally if i name this particular terminal as a if i name this particular terminal as b on the metal strip sorry we'll compare it and uh, we'll do the discussion i'll change the naming we'll name this point as c instead of b we'll take it as c between a and c those two terminal there is a wire of uniform thickness and of length 100 cm or 1 meter is fixed between a and c and this wire i said it is a uniform wire uniform wire in the sense throughout the length of the wire throughout the length of the wire thickness is same this wire is not made up of a single metal not like a, a copper wire or aluminum wire this wire is an alloy you know alloys are mixture of a metals these alloys are mixture of a metals and uh, preferably the alloys used are constantine alloy is a mixture of a metal the alloy preferred are constantine or uh, nichrome or manganin nichrome or manganin such alloys are preferred here 
um, what is the difference between alloy and a conductor you must single conductor you must be knowing resistivity of alloys are much greater than single conductors like copper and aluminium and um, not only resistivity the if you think about tcr temperature coefficient of a resistance of these alloys are very low means their resistance do not vary much with the temperature resistivity is high rho is very high for these alloys and alpha is very low alpha is very low means resistivity uh, resistance of these alloys do not vary much with the temperature and uh, this length of one meter has got a very high resistance nearly around 100 ohm resistance they may have okay this is a meter bridge when i say only this is a meter bridge next question is where there is a comparison with the wheatstones network uh, you, you will ask a question. You have told us in the beginning that meter bridge is a practical form of a Wheatstone network. There is no comparison at all. In a Wheatstone network, there are four resistors, cell, galvanometer, everything is there. Nothing is there in this. Meter bridge as an instrument is only this much. You will get exact comparison when you use a meter bridge for this particular experiment. When you use a meter bridge for this particular experiment, you will get exact comparison. Okay, before I proceed further, recall once again whatever the description I gave for a meter bridge. I said meter bridge is consisting of a rectangular wooden uh, wooden frame, rectangular wooden frame. On this wooden frame, on either end, there is a two L-shaped metal strips, two L-shaped metal strips, and uh, between the two L-shaped metal strips, there are there is a one more metal strip leaving the two gap, one at the left gap and another at the right gap. And whatever the dots I have marked here, they are representing the terminal in the meter bridge. And uh, I have named this particular terminal as A and that particular terminal as C. Between A and C, there is a, a wire of uniform thickness made up of alloy is fixed. Alloy is preferably a constantine or a nichrome or a manganese, I said. And uh, even I said, uh, compared to a single metal, they have a high resistivity but low TCR. Okay. Now let us perform an experiment so that you will get an exact comparison with the Wheatstone's network. <clears throat> a conductor, a conductor whose resistance has to be found, you have to connect across the left gap of the meter bridge. I will repeat, I said, a conductor whose resistance has to be determined is connected across the left gap of the meter bridge. I will represent that conductor by the resistance symbol here. If that conductor will have a two ends using a connecting wire. You connect that those two ends to the left gap of a meter bridge. Connecting wires are copper wire. This is a conductor whose resistance has to be found. And I will represent the resistance of the conductor by the symbol P, which is not known to you. P is unknown. Please remember, P is unknown. That only you have to find out. Across the right gap, you have to connect a resistance box. A standard resistance box, it has got a two terminals. The one end of a resistance box is connected to the one terminal in the right gap and the other end of the resistance box with the help of a connecting wire is connected to the other terminal in the right gap. Resistance box is a, a standard resistance box where you can keep some standard resistance during the performance of the experiment. Whatever the resistance you keep in the resistance box, I am going to represent as a Q. P is assumed to be as a resistance of a given conductor which is not known to you. Q will be known to you. During the experiment, you will keep some resistance in the resistance box. It will be known to you. P is unknown. So, left gap, right gap connection is over. Then, from this terminal, the middle terminal in this metal strip connections are taken using a copper wire other end of the copper wire is connected to a galvanometer that time i told you what is a galvanometer yeah uh, in the galvanometer is a device used to detect the presence of a current in the circuit so whenever the galvanometer is there in the circuit if it shows some deflection there is a current and you know in the galvanometer zero is at the center there will be a 30 division deflections on either side of the galvanometer. Just for your reference, I am redrawing it again. This is a galvanometer. There are two terminals and there is a pointer. Pointer will be reading 0 at the center and there will be 30 divisions on either side. So, wire is taken from this particular terminal connected to the one of the terminal in the galvanometer and other end of the galvanometer 
other end of the galvanometer again connections are taken using a copper wire it is connected to sliding contact sliding contact or a pointer sliding contact or a pointer or we also call it as a joystick key in a short form we call it as a jockey sliding contact or a pointer or a joystick key in a short form we call it as a jockey see it is actually a metal contact it is somewhat like a, almost of the size it is a metal contact one end there is a terminal for a connection other end is a pointed end entire thing is metal one end there is a knob we turn the knob keep the copper wire tighten it that is a connection from the galvanometer other end is a pointed end and uh, entire thing is metal it is covered by insulator so that you can comfortably hold that sliding contact otherwise you will may get a shock so this end is a metallic one this tip is a metallic entire thing is a metal but it is covered by insulator so that you can easily handle the sliding contact okay last connection last part from a take one wire again copper wire that is connected to the positive terminal of the battery or a voltage source or a cell negative of the battery is connected to c negative of the cell is connected to c point c now see i will name some additional points you just use your common sense if i say this point is a if i name that particular point as a what about this point should be a only what about this point should be a only because all these points are on the same metal strip correct since all these points are on the same metal strip when this is a obviously this should be also a only when this is c can i say even this is also c only because all the points are on the same metal strip i'll repeat again when this is a even this is also a even this is also a this is all, all these points are on the same metal strip metal strips are having a negligible resistance i said similarly when this is c even this point should be also c this is also c because all these terminals are on the same metal strip metal strips are having a negligible resistance similarly if i name this point as b don't you think even this is also b even this is also b because all these three terminals are on the same metal strip metal strips are having a negligible resistance so all will be at same potential same points now you do the comparison when i gave a description of a meter base you had a doubt no where it is comparable to a wheatstone's network now you get at least 90% of the at least 85 to 90% comparison c a to b who is connected p c this is over a to b p b to c who is connected q it is a resistance box you are going to keep some resistance the resistance box c b to c q then b to the galvanometer there is a connection b to the galvanometer there is a connection correct then a to the positive of the battery and negative of the battery to the c even that is also there a to the positive of the battery negative of the battery to the c even that is also over at least 80% 90 80% comparison you got with the wheatstone's network remaining is what is missing g to d a to d c to d is missing correct that 100% comparison you will get when you perform and complete the experiment what is the experiment go back what is the use of the instrument i said it is used to determine the resistance of a given conductor correct yeah and what is the basic principle i said balancing condition of its network balancing condition is the ratio of the adjacent arms to the resistors are equal p by q is equal to r by s remember that point okay now i am performing the experiment see how to perform an experiment you have to keep some resistance in the resistance box q you have to unplug or you have to keep some resistance in the resistance box q keep some resistance resistance box q of course there is a rule you have to follow in keeping the resistance in the resistance box i'll tell you 
what is the rule you are supposed to follow now for a time being assume that this is phi ohm you kept a resistance in the resistance box as phi ohm now take that sliding contact remember every connection has been done after the connections take the sliding contact or a pointer or a jockey switch on the battery keep the sliding contact the tip of the sliding contact in contact with the wire near end a when you keep a sliding contact in contact with the wire near end a i said it is kept in contact with the wire fixed between a and c that alloy near end a pointer in the galvanometer should show a deflection to one side it was showing zero no now the pointer in the galvanometer should deflect to one side remove the sliding contact away from the contact with the wire deflection will become zero again keep the sliding contact in contact with the wire near end c the pointer will show a deflection to the opposite side when you keep a sliding contact after the connection in contact with the wire near end a pointer in the galvanometer will show deflection to one side of the zero then you keep a sliding contact in contact the wire near end c in contact the wire the pointer in the galvanometer will show deflection to the other side of the zero means your connections are proper this is how do you check connections are proper or not then again repeat it again keep the sliding contact in contact with the wire near end a deflection in the galvanometer will be one side of the zero keep on moving the sliding contact in contact with the wire actually you can slide but uh, we say that don't slide the sliding contact name itself suggest it sh i should suppose to slide but we say that don't slide because if you keep on sliding it and uh, if number of people perform this experiment and they keep on sliding it uniformity of that wire may be lost so what we suggest is keep the sliding contact in contact with the wire near end a you found a deflection to one side lift it up keep it to the next position again you find a deflection lift it up keep it to the next position again you find a deflection when you keep on moving to the next successive points on the wire you may find that deflection goes on decreases pointer in the galvanometer deflect one side now deflection goes on decreases and when you keep the sliding contact in contact with the wire at one particular point listen to this carefully when you keep a sliding contact or that uh, pointer or the jockey in contact with the wire at one particular point let us name that point as a d you got a deflection in the galvanometer zero you got a deflection in the galvanometer zero of course if you remove the sliding contact away from the contact deflection will be zero but i am telling you you have to get a deflection in the galvanometer zero with the sliding contact in contact with the wire between a and c assume that when the sliding contact was kept in contact with the wire at point d deflection read by the galvanometer is zero what do you mean by deflection read by the galvanometer is zero current through the galvanometer is zero when current through the galvanometer is zero we say no network is balanced so what you need to know is once we found that at when you keep a sliding contact in contact the wire at this particular point deflection read by the galvanometer is zero you have to measure that length from a to d of course in the instrument there will be a scale fixed on that wooden frame there will be a scale fixed this side of the scale will be zero and wherever the sliding contact was kept in contact with the wire where you find a deflection in the galvanometer is zero measure that length we call that length as balancing length i said we call that length as balancing length why we call it as balancing length you make use of your common sense in understanding we call that length as balancing length and you have to measure that length assume that the length was around 48 cm 0.48 meter because total length of the wire between a and c is 100 cm 1 meter no so it is 48 cm it is expressed in meter resistance is in ohm 0.48 meter why it is called as balancing length you know because at this particular point deflection in the galvanometer has become zero means i can say that if it is a practical form of a wheatstone's network network is balanced because current flowing through the galvanometer is zero that is why the corresponding length is called balancing length then coming to the main point our aim is to determine the resistance of a given conductor resistance of the given conductor 
that is p which is not known to us right that only we have to calculate that is found using the formula q l by 1 minus l resistance is found using the formula q l by 1 minus l now i have to explain the formula why this formula that is actually the important thing to be followed you know q you know l substitute you will get the answer for p that is the answer for this question but of course i will explain you why this formula was used that is a different thing so before that one more thing i would like to tell you i said in the beginning you have to keep some resistance in the resistance box phi ohm but in keeping the resistance also you have to follow rule actually what we say is you have to keep on adjusting q till you get a balancing length between 40 centimeter to 60 centimeter what is the total length of the wire between a and c 100 centimeter you have to adjust the value of q in the standard resistance box keep some value of q you have to keep that value of a q so that the balancing length what you get should be between 40 centimeter to 60 centimeter reason is if you take a readings with the balancing length between 40 centimeter to 60 centimeter readings are more accurate errors are less minimum readings will be more accurate and errors are minimum that is why we suggest that if the balancing length is obtained between 40 to 60 centimeter then the readings are more accurate since because of that only you have to adjust the value of q so that you get the balancing length between 40 to 60 centimeter there is a rule to be followed okay to minimize the error now coming to this point why this formula when the sliding contact was in contact with the wire at d i said your uh, deflection the galvanometer has become zero now you have to measure the length that is called balancing length if this is l what is the remaining length tell me a to d is l what is d to c surely one minus l surely one minus l where l is in meter total length of the wire is one meter no l is in meter if this is l meter means remaining is one minus l now you got 100 percent comparison with the meter bridge i mean Wheatstone's network. You got 100 com 100 percent comparison of a meter bridge with a Wheatstone's network. How? See, galvanometer to D connection is there. Correct. Who else was missing? A to D and D to C, right? A to D. Don't you think A to D? There is an alloy of length L. That alloy of length L surely has got some resistance. Correct. So that means that R will be the resistance of the alloy of length L. Don't you think D to C also an alloy of length 1 minus L even that also has got some resistance. Correct. That S will be the resistance of that part of the alloy. R is the resistance of this part of the alloy of length L. S is the resistance of this part of the alloy of length 1 minus L. See you got 100 percent comparison. Since network is balanced I have to go for this formula right. P by Network is balanced. I have to go for a formula. P by Q is equal to R by S. Listen carefully. I am explaining why we are using this formula. Right. I am explaining that. P by Q is equal to R by S. Okay. Anyhow, P is unknown. That we want to know. Q is known to us. We only kept it. Of course, you may be adjusting Q until you get a balance in length between 40 to 60. But you will be knowing Q what you have kept it. Right. What was R I said? R is a resistance of a alloy of length L. It is a resistance of alloy of length L. Or I can say wire. Of course, wire is made up of alloy of length L divided by what is S? It is a resistance of a alloy of length 1 minus L. It is a resistance of alloy wire of length 1 minus L. I think you are able to follow. Now you do the substitution for that resistance of the alloy of wire of length L. Rho L by A formula. See the last step. P by Q where P is unknown. Q is known to us. Correct? P by Q is equal to what is the resistance of the wire of length L? Rho L by A. Correct? Rho L by A. Divided by what is the resistance of the wire of length 1 minus L? 
rho is rho only because both l and 1 minus l is the same material resistivity will be same what is the length of that 1 minus l and what is the area of cross section a only because i said in the beginning only uh, alloy connected between a and c is of uniform thickness area of cross section throughout it is remaining same don't you think that i can cancel rho by a when i cancel rho by a what you are left out with in the final step i'll write it here i hope you're able to follow this it will be p by q is equal to l by 1 minus l when p by q is equal to l by 1 minus l what will be p then q l by 1 minus l using this formula you can get the answer for p i hope you follow and one more thing last point for this particular discussion <clears throat> think practically i said you have to keep on adjusting q so that you get a balancing length between 40 centimeter to 60 centimeter because for that balancing length errors are minimum can't you think of trying this keep the sliding contact exactly at 50 centimeter keep the sliding contact exactly in contact the wire at 50 centimeter adjust to q adjust the value of q so that deflection the galvanometer becomes zero think over it what i said keep the sliding contact in contact the wire exactly at 50 centimeter adjust the q so that you have to keep that value of q so that deflection the galvanometer will become zero don't you think that time q will be equal to p should be this is a more accurate reading that time q should be equal to p or p should be equal to q why don't you think l min l and 1 minus l is same what is l 50 what is 1 minus l 50 50 by 50 is 1 no that time q should be equal to p most accurate one suppose if they ask you in a meter bridge experiment balancing length was found to be 50 centimeter what is the conclusion resistance kept in the resistance box and that unknown resistance which is connected in the left gap are of same resistance that is a meaning p must be equal to q if balancing length is 50 centimeter i think you understood so remember this helpful a lot especially when you are performing the experiment i said there are two experiments you're going to perform with the meter bridge in both the experiments method of performing experiment is same you have to keep some resistance the resistance box q then you have to find out the balancing length and the rule is that you have to adjust the q so that the balancing length should be between 40 to 60 then the resistance can be found using the formula ql by 1 minus l that's all so now you got 100 percent comparison with the wheatstone's network i think you understood this <clears throat>